Section 2. Meet and Greet Due to the number of students and the size of the cafeteria, the school had three separate lunch periods between the hours of 11.45, 12.30, and 1.15. This included an additional 15 minutes for each of the students to empty their trays and head to class. Anne was scheduled with the 1.15 p.m. lunch that she overheard other students call the Starvation Lunch. The name suited it well as her stomach had been protesting since early morning. Earlier, the office announced over the intercoms that they would be holding lunch outside for the freshmen as a welcoming party. Anne followed a pack of girls outside when they were heading out to the event. She had not yet located her locker, which led her to wearing her backpack, containing four subject books and the rest of her supplies. Anne did not mind this, since she felt it were better to carry it around than to have trouble finding her locker, remembering the combination, and being late to class. It did, however, seem to grow heavier throughout the day. The sun was shining brightly outside when she arrived. Arranged around in a half circle were an assortment of concession stands that were handing out t-shirts to the 2006 freshman newcomers, while others served food and drinks. Anne took notice that each stand was asking to see the student's school ID prior to providing their services. Some of the seniors must have been trying to lay out a class or get extra food. Anne decided on getting a slice of pizza that she paid $2 for. She looked down at the small piece expressionless when handed to her and asked if she could get a cup of water when the concession stand owner asked what type of soda that she would like. On the large tub filled with ice and a plethora of sodas, it displayed a thick piece of carpenter paper on it that had a large $3 written in black marker the sign had gotten soaked from the water dripping from the emerging sodas. Anne! Anne turned and saw a familiar face from over the summer, Sebastian. She was relieved to see a familiar face in the sea of people. Sebastian was nearly six foot tall already, though he was only 16. His hair was short chestnut brown, hazel eyes, and wore a goofy smile on his face. He was dressed in a white button-up shirt with electric blue flames on the trim with a pair of worn-out blue jeans and black Converse. She had met him back in the summer when her mom worked at a small strip mall in town called Woodson's Mall. Sebastian's mom was the security guard. Anne had a crush on him after they had hung out a few times, walked laps around the strip mall, and talked. He told her that he did not have the same feelings for her, but did not want to lose their friendship. To her advantage, Sebastian was a sophomore and had the basics down of the school. She hoped that he would help her out. She jogged to where he stood waving, hanging on to the greasy cheese pizza slice on the paper-thin plate that was already seeping through, causing it to appear see-through. Hey! Anne squealed. I thought I wouldn't see anyone here I knew! She said, looking around the building. This place is huge! Not really. Sebastian said boredly as he grabbed the pizza out of her hand and took several bites. He handed it back to her half-eaten. You just gotta get used to where everything is. He managed to muffle out through the mouthful. Anne frowned at the thought of being here for four long years. I thought only freshmen were supposed to be out here, she observed. Nah, Sebastian said. We have the starvation lunch. So we just came out here rather than sitting in that shit cafeteria. He said as he pointed back to the school without turning. We? Sebastian nodded and pointed across the field into another area where there were fewer crowds. You ought to meet my friend Fat. He's pretty cool. He turned and began walking in the direction he had pointed. Anne followed but had the jog to keep pace with him. Wait, huh? She scrutinized. Yeah, he's fat, Sebastian explained. And I'm bones. He pointed to his chest, which he puffed out and peered off in the distance, as if he were distracted and proud. Sebastian was tall, but he was not lanky or bony. He had more of a street build, in Anne's opinion. So, why are you bones? Because. He looked down at her, gesturing to his body and smiled. I'm not fat, therefore I am bones. She chuckled at his tasteless answer. Sebastian and Anne were approaching a couple sitting on a bench off by itself. 
There was a blonde haired girl wearing a black pair of squared glasses, a prep t-shirt, bedazzled jeans, and a miserable looking face. The girl was clearly in a bad mood. The other was a ginger haired boy, heavy set, absent mindedly picking at a label on the pot bottle, twisting it around. He wore a dark shirt, but it was difficult to tell what the graphic was on it where it had faded over time, along with a pair of jeans and sneakers. It was evident that they were not getting along. The relief Anne felt was washed away in an instant and replaced with an uneasy atmosphere that was floating around the couple on the bench. Fat! Sebastian sang, while throwing his hands up in the air, prancing toward the ginger kid. The ginger kid looked up and his expression immediately went from moody to comically stupid. Fat raised his arms out at the approaching ballerina. Sebastian jumped into Fat's arms, causing them both to fall backward off of the bench and to the ground with a heavy thud. The blonde girl jumped up from the bench with her mouth open wide in anger and disbelief. She yanked her purse onto her shoulder and stormed off to the school. Duo was still on the ground laughing and hugging. Sebastian rubbed his hand around on the red-haired kid's head and started caressing his face as if it were the perfect contour. Fat smacked Sebastian's hand away and spoke in a prissy tone. Now's not the time, honey. The boys laughed loudly as they got back on their feet. Fat was brushing the dust from his pants when Sebastian gestured towards Anne. That's Anne. That's the girl I was telling you about that I met at the mall. Fat brushed the rest of the dust off of himself and glanced up at her. His brow furrowed as his head tilted slightly to the side. He was difficult for Anne to read. He stared at Anne for several seconds with an expressionless face before bringing his sights back to Sebastian, but for only a few seconds before turning back to Anne. Fat smiled in a comical manner, stiffly waving at her. Hi, I'm Fat. Sebastian crossed his arms and leaned towards Fat, propping himself on Fat's shoulder, then glanced at him. Shall we? Fat placed his arm on Sebastian's shoulders while Sebastian did the same. They both looked up at the dark-haired girl that stood before them beginning their song. Who are we? Sebastian sang, peering to his partner. I am Fat! Fat sang abruptly as he pointed a thumb to his chest with a grin spread across his face. And I am Bones! Sebastian chimed in with Fat's tune, peering to his singing partner. The two boys danced in unison as they tilted their heads back and forth, completing their song with one last set of Fat and Bones, Fat and Bones, Fat and Bones. Anne clapped nervously. She allowed a faint smile to creep on her face. The duo bowed. She was not yet sure what to make of it or the new face. She was growing rather awkward from the show that they had displayed and the staring eyes of the two boys. Not knowing what to do next, she looked down at her half-eaten pizza and took a large bite of the slice that was already cold. Sebastian broke off, turning to face both Anne and Fat. Hey, I'm going to go poop, he said proudly. So I'll be right back. He turned and headed back towards the school, leaving Anne with the new face. Anne had not yet taken her eyes off of Sebastian, but she could feel eyes on her. Peeking from the corner of her eye, she noticed that Fat was standing nearby and was eerily still. Assuming that he had manners, she intended to look at him so he would stop watching her, like most individuals will do and commonly without thought. However, when she met eyes with him, he kept his locked on hers and did not look away. She stared for another moment and began to feel as though she was being dragged in by his frozen eyes when he smiled. She looked away, feeling as though if she did not, then something bad would happen. She felt her face and her ears growing hot and dropped her head to look at down at her feet, allowing her hair to fall over her eyes and a majority of her face to obscure it from him. Reaching into her pocket in order to put on an act that she was actually rooting around for an imaginary item for distraction to avoid his eyes. After several long moments, she realized that he was not going to simply look away from her. He wanted to speak to her, and he was not going to allow her to slip off before doing so. 
she removed her hand from her pocket with a short, hmm, of disapproval. She forced herself to meet eyes with him again, as it was inevitable that she could just walk off without saying anything to the staring kid. Once they met Sats, he smiled. She smiled back, but certainly not quite as genuine as he did. So, Sebastian has told me a lot about you, he began. He sat back on the bench. Turning to her, he looked at the empty seat next to him and tapped his hand on the wood, peering back to her. You can sit down. I know that those books are probably heavy. He said this while leaning over to glance at the large gray and black backpack she had strapped on. She returned a nervous smile and wondered to herself if he realized why she was still wearing it in the first place. Knowing that declining his offer would be rude after just meeting him and pointing out that she did indeed have a heavy load, she had been lugging around with her the majority of the day, she caved in and took a seat beside him. She was not accustomed to making friendships easily. It was not an easy task for her to simply get along with others, but normally they seemed to repel from her if she attempted to fit in. This was somewhat unusual for her, excluding the time she met Sebastian. When Anne and Sebastian met, he was straightforward about speaking to her and being her friend, to which she gladly accepted. She took her backpack off, setting it on the ground in front of her. She hadn't realized how sore her shoulders had grown from carrying it around. She was not about to ask for help to locate her locker, though. Returning her eyes back to meet his, she was ready to face the inevitable, but with a heavy heart. He was already looking at her with a wry smile. Despite being unaware of what type of smile it was, she smiled back. So, what do you think of the school so far? He gestured lazily towards the building. Well, she began. It is rather intimidating since I don't know my way around yet. Eh, he sighed. It gets easier within a few weeks. You'll have it down. You sure about that? She asked smirking and raising her eyebrows in disagreement. She felt that she may be getting better at conversing than she originally thought, or so she hoped. He glanced at her without turning his head in her direction. I'm fairly certain. You seem like you may be a little bit more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. She was not prepared for that, causing her to blush. The confidence she had gained during their brief discussion fell into embarrassment. He noticed this and gave a smirk before looking off in another direction. It seemed that his original response was to give her a moment to recuperate, but then lost himself somewhere in thought. However, the longer she watched him, the more it seemed like he was discussing an important matter with himself and unsure how it should be dealt with. Considering this as a possibility caused her nerves to grow shaky before he shot a glance in her direction, startling her. His eyes were wide, filled with anger and fear, glaring into her. She stopped breathing and froze. He then softened his expression, peering down at his shoes as he lightly scuffled them in the dirt as he spoke. You'll do fine, I'm sure. After this, their conversation lightened quickly, allowing her to regain her balance in communicating with this seemingly nice stranger that gave her an uneasiness that she hadn't felt in many years. Not since early childhood, that is. He spoke to her of classes and different norms within the school that she was to expect, along with fond memories that he had of him and Sebastian. She added a few comments in here and there. Perhaps I've made a friend, she thought. At that thought, the blonde walked into view. Anne could see that the blonde thought Anne was trying to move in on what Anne assumed was her boyfriend. Anne looked down to pick at a stray thread she quickly located on her jacket sleeve. Vaz seemed to have detected Anne's shift and glanced up, noticing the blonde nearby who was glaring jealously their way. Anne seemed to stumble into these odd predicaments and had alibis that were rarely believed, though were normally true and not inflated for sympathy. Resentment swelled within her as she thought that she would never make friends at this rate now and the fact that she had forgotten about the blonde after her annoyed departure. Anne pursed her lips, not knowing exactly what to do, and her anxiety threatened to rise at the thought of saying that what the blonde saw was a misunderstanding. 
She then decided she would just get up and leave to avoid the whole thing. Anne grabbed her backpack, about to pull it over her shoulder when she felt a hand on her. She jumped. Hey! He began and released her. You don't have to leave. She's just jealous and we've been arguing. She doesn't like it when I talk to any girl. She'll get over it. He waved it off and lazily gestured with a head tilt in her direction. Anne shook her head. No, I, I don't want to cause any problems. I... Shh. Don't worry about it, okay? He pressed calmly. What was she to say at this point? She sighed and slowly sat back down, letting her backpack on the ground. Peering through her hair, she noticed the blonde was walking away. Glancing back at Fat, who was already staring at her, a chill ran down her spine as she tried to stealthily shake it off. So, what's your real name? She observed. That's not important. You can call me Fat, he said, mimicking the same leggy gesture. The bell rang off in the distance. Anne quickly grabbed her backpack and slung it around on her shoulder. Hey, I gotta go. I have no idea where I'm going, she mentioned. She turned back towards the school, thinking that she had escaped the conversation. I can walk you to class. I've been here for a year, so I can at least tell you what direction you need to go, he volunteered. He stood from the bench, taking several steps ahead of her before peering back at her. What's your schedule say? Anne swung her backpack around and quickly dug through it until she located her schedule. Room 102, uh, Composition 1, stated, putting the paper back in her bag and zipped it as they walked. 